It's about yeah. you know, uh, domestic violence and abuse and the physical and emotional bearing. So how did this yeah. role challenge you as an actor? You know, it kind of, um, as much as I hate to admit it, it kind of changed my perspective on acting a little bit because I've always been like of the mind that I'm like, you know, I'm a professional, like it's all pretend, I leave it all there. But because this was a true story, I it affected me. Like it, I would, <laughs> I would go home and like kind of, it would still be with me, um, which was hard for me to admit, but uh, I had like, it was like, I had a ton of support, um, our director was Brad, Cal Potter, who played played my boyfriend, is like, I'm like one of my dearest friends now, and I'm, um, I trust him a lot, so. And uh, you work opposite Shannon Doherty, mm -hmm. how was that? It was great, she's so sweet, she's so lovely, she's a, she's a vegetarian, and she cares a lot about animals. She was like, she's like the sweetest human being. She'd always be like, um, I, you know, I, I just like started this like charity for animals. I'm like, oh, Sam, like. <laughs> Maybe one day soon. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Andy the Great. The trailer Andy's looks great. so good, and there's Holler Can Gold local music in it. So yeah. when can we expect to see this film? Um, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna go. We've they've submitted to. I think all the festivals that they're going to submit to this year, and um, I don't know when you'll see it, but I've seen it, and that movie is like super close to my heart because you know it's like um, it's kind of it felt like summer camp, like shooting that one. Like all my buddies were in it, and like yeah. Welcome to the Leo Awards. How great is it to have your design showcased on the carpet today? I'm, I'm honored to be here and and show my works. Um, my company is called Sagite Looks Designs. My name is Yolanda Skelton, and I'm from the Gixan Nation up in Hazleton and I'm honored to be on the Coast Salish territory showing my fashions tonight. So obviously your culture influences a lot of your designs for this kind of particular line today that we'll be seeing on the carpet. What inspired you in particular? Every design that's on the carpet is inspired by an oral tradition from, from my own nation and also nations that I've lived at, with over the past and they're all connected um, to story from, from, our, from my culture and uh, I'm trying to share it with, with everybody. So do you want to maybe explain just a bit of maybe pick one or two? Okay, this, this piece here is really important to me. This one I made for the Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women project that we, I was a part of. And um, this is a hummingbird, and the hummingbird design is um, when you've lost a loved one, when a hummingbird comes and flutters around, it means that loved one has come back to you to tell you that they're okay on the other side, and that's why I created the red dress in the, in the hummingbird design. I love that each one has a story. So where can people find more about your work and your design? Um, I have a, a my company's called Sagite Looks Designs, but you can just type in Yolanda Skelton um, and designer and it'll come up and it has my web page and everything on there. I only do um, one like one of a kind pieces for people, so it's all done couture. Quiet now and hear the tremor of a hope that's growing deep inside. To mouth. I see Congratulations on your nomination for your roles, Dylan and Red Snow. How did this role challenge you as an actor? Oh jeez, in a lot of ways. Um, the circumstances Dylan uh, gets into is, you know, unlike anything in normal Canadian life really. So going to those places emotionally and physically is quite, quite the feat. Um, I enjoyed the process every step of the way. But um, yeah, just being in the side of a, like a soldier in that kind of war zone, it takes a lot, you know, emotionally and mentally. But yeah, that was, that was quite the experience. Being in the war zone, survival, land, culture, that's something close to your heart, your Cree identity as shown in ASCII Boys and Hey Cousin. So as an artist, like, why is it important for you to maintain that cultural connection to your project? Okay, there's a million answers for this. Uh, I guess mine culturally is, you know, ah, oh geez. For me, as a Cree man, knowing where I come from, where my roots are, it, it's not only supportive, but it gives me a sense of purpose to kind of carry that forward into the future and share it in a good way with myself and others. So it's, 
It's like it's like the miracle of life. The more you share, the more you have, you know? And culturally it's the same. Congratulations on your nomination for Thank your you. work in Supernatural. Thank you very much. So Donna's a sheriff, she's a hunter. Yes. You know, how great is it to play this strong female character? Oh my god, it's amazing. But also, I mean, she is a strong woman and she's coming into her own, but it's amazing the trajectory of that character where she started off as somebody who's very unsure about herself, very unsure about her place in the world. And and now she's becoming a woman in her own right and I feel like it's such an honor to play a woman that I feel like we all are we're all just trying to figure it out we're all just trying to figure out what we're, our purpose is here and she's making the right choices for herself and I really admire that about her so also having that vulnerability as you mentioned Supernatural is such an amazing passionate fan base what's it like to meet you know so many fans at convention oh my god it's amazing it's unreal everything I have is because of them or in part because of them uh, they're they're such a, a powerhouse of a fandom they're changing the world I feel so fortunate that I get to be a, such a small part of, of that fandom and I feel grateful every every day. And you're co-host of the Wayward Podcast with Kim Rhodes. Tell me a bit about the podcast and how listeners can tune in. So uh, the podcast you can find on iTunes or on Spotify. It's called the Wayward Podcast. Kim and I, after our contracts, after the spinoff, we're up. We're like, well, what do we do? We still have things really to say. really wanted the show. To I know, I know. And I love you and I thank you. Um, and we just, we had things that we wanted to do that involved the wayward movement outside of the show, which is a betterment towards um, building a, a society, a society of women, a society of people who believe in themselves and are not ashamed of their flaws. And so we really started to build upon that. And so I brought, I broached the subject of a podcast with her because I said, there's people that need to be heard and we need to help them be heard. And now we it's become a weekly thing and she is more has puts more effort into it than I do even because she's like every week I'll be like let's take a week off she'll be like no every week we got to get it out there so it's out every week we love it I see the headlights turn into sunrise we'll build a real love to hear here with the team behind I will keep your light tell me a bit about this short film and what you hope viewers take away uh, so this is a film about a uh, young female, a uh, young pregnant woman being fearful for the future of her next generation and uh, it's very much inspired by my how I feel very anxious about the environmental crisis that we're facing right now. Uh, so we're hoping to use the film to convey this important theme as well as um, knowing that uh, obtaining hope is very important facing the climate crisis right now. So as you mentioned, it's very relevant, especially today and in Vancouver. As like young emerging filmmakers, what was the greatest challenge that you faced when making the film? Well, I can say, <laughs> in terms of cinematography, um, one image that we were really interested in conveying was like the the kind of polluted heavy air that that you see in places like Beijing. But obviously, Vancouver doesn't often have that, except for in the summer when there's like the fire season um, but we got very lucky because we had to shoot in uh, the middle of the winter that uh, sudden fog started rolling into Vancouver so we started filming those fogs and then later in post-production we were able to make the fog look like pollution and that helped a lot. And um, you're a UBC film production student so like what for people who are looking to get into film like how has the school kind of supported you and your project I know you were at Whistler Film Festival as well yeah, um, that was a really good question because um, the community, the sense of community that we got at the film program was very helpful um, in terms of this This was my first uh, short film that I ever wrote and directed. So it was, really, it was, it was great to have uh, classmates who supported me along the way and getting feedbacks from classmates as well as all the instructors. And uh, the resources from UBC also allow us to collaborate with people from outside of the program, such as from uh, School of Music, we have our composer who are studying there, getting a master degree. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a great collaboration. Hello, how are you? Very well. First off, let me start by saying, wait, hold this again. Leo for Phil Granger. We all know why we're here. That's the one rule of the night. Get, Leo, get Phil, his first Leo. The man deserves it. He's the best of all time. I said it right there. 
So you're running a good, how has your campaign been going so far? Well, the campaign's been going good. I went shirtless with the Leo for Phil last week. This week I got it. I got uh, words from the higher ups, you see, that I should probably wear a suit and not be topless tonight. So you found another creative way to campaign for Leo for Phil. So that's what we're talking about, um, the film Woodland. So you're nominated as well for your role as Jake. Who cares about that? It's all about Phil. Okay, it's all about Phil. So, we'll say, you, as you mentioned, you never went to formal acting like training. So, what did you learn from Phil? Yeah, I never went to formal acting training, but I guarantee you Phil did, because God, he's good. Um, what did I learn from Phil? Phil just came in, put his heart and soul in every day. He's like my big brother, and we just had the best time together. Um, and that he hasn't won one of these is probably the biggest travesty I've ever seen. If I'm putting it on a scale, definitely the number one travesty I've ever heard of. So we're going to talk about The 100 very sure. briefly. Season 6 already renewed for Season 7. So happy for you all. Two part question. First off, your co-star and friend Bob Morley, he directed episode 11. Mm -hmm. Fans would like to know, what is he like behind the camera? I'm not allowed to say if I was there or not. Okay then. But if I, if I can speak freely, I heard that he was fantastic. Yeah, he really, he really did fantastic. And even if I wasn't there, I'd saw him when he was doing it anyway. So, love him. Your father directs your sister, Leo Ward, last weekend for her web series, Rachel. Do you think this might be in your future? I don't know. I mean, people have been asking me that. That's a fair question. Uh, right now, no. I just have no interest. I have no interest at all. I, I love being an actor. I'm a hired gun. It's what I do. Speaking of my father, he's right there taking a photo of me. Is anyone else hot in here? It's hot. I'm on fat burners, so I'm sweating. nomination tonight for your role as Janet in Frozen in Love. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're good. Uh, thank you so much. She's a PR <laughs> exec. How did this role challenge you as an actor? Um, you know what? I'm just so like, like grateful that you've like you were ready to meet me. Wow. Um, sorry, what was the question? How did this role challenge you as an actor? Like, how is it oh, different yeah. than, you know, other roles that you've done? So, uh, playing Janet was amazing because it was, um, she, like you said, is the head of a PR firm. So, I really had to play with a strength, kindness, a, so, uh, a capacity to be social, uh, and yet firm. And playing with that balance in a Hallmark movie, which is always super positive and family oriented. So, that was the fun challenge of it and playing the confidant to Rachel Lee Cook. So that was, I think, probably the funnest challenge of the movie. And you filmed this in Toronto, Global Drama Nurses, out yes. later this year. Tell me a bit about the show and your character. I feel like I need to know more about you now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just wrapped filming my first lead in a series on uh, Global's upcoming show, Nurses, and it's been, it was extraordinary. We just wrapped, I just flew back about a week and a half ago, and uh, man, uh, the audience is in for a ride. It's in, it's um, the audience is in for a ride. It's ex so well written, so highly emotional, extremely character driven, and our showrunner Adam Peddle is uh, just made magic with every episode. And it was a dream come true to work on that show. And I we just saw the pilot, and it looked incredible. And so I I'm you know fingers crossed that people really like it because uh, we poured our hearts into it, and we're all really excited for people to see it. Congratulations. Congratulations on your nomination for your work in The Good Doctor. Thank you. So what does it mean to be a part of the show? Uh, what does it mean to be a part of the show? Uh, it's a really great show. The We got lucky that uh, the, the days that we were working on The Good Doctor, it was a quarantine situation, so we were kind of uh, in a closed setting and so um, the cast uh, that was kind of guest starring and the crew got really close. Yeah. Hopefully seeing more of Kellen in season three as Alex and Mia are kind of reconcil working towards reconciliation right, in right, season right. two. Something interesting, you're also a hip-hop R&B kind of musician. Yes. There's a video of you singing a Mario song and a Lord being an idol. Tell me a bit about your passion for music oh. and when we can expect to see your mixtape. That's great. <laughs> How did, you, how did you find that? That's great. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, hopefully, maybe. Um, that was a long time ago. That was, was like 2013. That was 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was, yeah, I was in grade 12. Um, I'm always kind of working on music, but right now, there's a lot of really exciting opportunities in terms of uh, film and TV that we're, we're working on, so, 
Yeah. And our fun question for you, so congratulations, you won the opportunity to audition for MasterChef. What are you making as your signature dish? If I got a chance to audition for it, what am I gonna make as my, uh, probably like, oh man, that's, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good question. I recently made like Taiwanese beef noodle soup at home okay. and it was pretty bomb, so maybe that. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a weird, creative version of that. Maybe <laughs> back and forth. You know what? You know what I would do? My mom got me a crock pot when I moved out, and I haven't used it in three years. And I feel like once I start using it, I'm gonna get really into it. So I'd probably like do something in my crock pot and be like, Master Chef, you're welcome. They would love that. <laughs> they would. Is that cheating? Is that? <laughs> it is. <laughs> you're like, yeah, it is, but it's fine. <laughs> something vegan. Love you, baby. And we were just actually going to talk about Rihanna not being here. So, if she could be any ice cream flavor, which would she be? Hmm. Ooh. Oh, God. Well, it's going to have to be vegan ice cream, obviously. After that, I think she wants a... I don't know. I think she just loves a good vanilla ice cream, but she's so much more interested. There's complexities in there. There's the little, you know, the little vanilla extra, the little beans, the little things. She's a prickly one, though, so I don't know. That's tough. Ice cream flavor. Oh, jeez. You know that, you know the, at the ice cream truck where they give the vanilla chocolate swirl? That one. You know, you can lick both sides and be like, yeah, chocolate and vanilla. That's the best of both worlds. Exactly. I guess I would be matcha flavor. That's a good answer. Yeah. Also. Uh, I guess raspberries, raspberry flavor. Maybe make chocolate. Oh my gosh, I would be a Rocky Road because you get a little bit of everything, and I feel like I'm always a tapas type of girl, so you get a little bit of peanut butter, a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of like something you don't really know what it is, but it's really good. That's probably what I would uh, choose if I were uh, an ice cream for the rest of my life. Be a pretty good life. <laughs> make people happy all the day long.